thanks for coming today. Great to be with you, Claire. <laughs> thanks to APAC for a great conference and a chance to join you again. Senator Coons, you just returned from a trip to Israel. We were, we were talking about it backstage. It, it sounds as though it was fascinating. You had an opportunity to meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu, visit the Syrian border. What is your candid sense of Israel's security situation coming away from the trip? Well, it was a great trip because it was bipartisan. There were four Republicans, three Democrats. Senator Lindsey Graham and I uh, led this trip. And we had a chance to visit Jordan and Israel. And in Israel, we spent four days looking at its security situation. And I was truly struck. In my eight years as a senator, I haven't seen an immediate security situation as threatening as today. Think about it. We've got in the Sinai, ISIS still active, threatening both Egypt and Israel. Gaza, we have Hamas digging tunnels, preparing to fire rockets. In Lebanon, we have Hezbollah embedding tens of thousands of advanced munitions and rockets threatening the north of Israel. And we took uh, a helicopter tour of all of this and then got a briefing from the Golan Heights with General Aviv Kohavi, uh, the Deputy Chief of Staff of the IDF. In Syria, a failed state where you've got both ISIS still active and Hezbollah, Shia militias, the IRGC under a Russian air cover, Iran increasingly and aggressively challenging Israel, and recently directly sending a drone into Israeli airspace. It is important that we make clear that when Iran and Russia challenge Israel directly, they are also challenging the United States. We need resolve, we need to stand together. Well, that sounds serious. And as you mentioned, the trip was part of a, a bipartisan congressional delegation led by you and Senator Graham with several of your colleagues. In this incredibly partisan time, how important is it that Israel remain a bipartisan issue and how possible do you think that is? Well, that's where you come in because frankly, keeping US support for Israel American engagement with Israel, not just on security issues, but also on innovation and technology and our shared values, it is absolutely essential. Because there's so few things that bring us together in Congress these days. We need to show the world that we can sustain a bipartisan commitment to Israel, to its security, and to its thriving as the only democracy in the Middle East and our most vital ally in the Middle East. You know, um, we were also talking backstage about the fact that the delegation also traveled to Jordan, which of course has a critical and evolving relationship with Israel. What were your takeaways from that part of the trip? We had a remarkable dinner with King Abdullah um, and heard from him security concerns, yes, but more economic concerns than I've heard before. There's 650,000 Syrian refugees in Jordan and the downward pressure on their economy is remarkable. The IMF is pushing them to make some very difficult reforms, and I think we need to do more to invest in Jordan's economic stability. King Abdullah represents a version of Islam that is moderate. They are a counter-terrorism partner to Israel and the United States, and they are an island of stability in an otherwise chaotic region. I think we can and should do more to support Jordan. Um Last night, uh, we heard from Ambassador Haley about U.S. efforts to combat anti-Israel bias at the U.N., and I know this is an issue you care deeply about. You and Senator Rubio, the two of you apparently do work very well together, authored a letter to the U.N. Secretary General calling for efforts to root out this anti-Israel bias. What impact do you think that letter had? Well, one of the great things about uh, my working partnership, my friendship with Marco, is that we're on the Foreign Relations Committee together. That's nice, that's important. But we're also on the Appropriations Committee, the specific one that funds the United Nations. Uh, and so our communications with the Secretary General that have pressed for more transparency, more efficiency, and serious effort to combat the anti-Israel bias in the UN has produced some early results. Our Ambassador Nikki Haley has been a strong and capable and good leader in this part, but we should be doing more to push back on anti-Israel bias, on frankly anti-Semitism uh, in the United Nations. And you mentioned that you and Senator Rubio work well together. You've also introduced legislation, of course, in support of security assistance to Israel and expanded U.S.-Israel cooperation in a number of fields. Can you tell us a little bit more about that initiative and why you decided to lead the effort? 
Well, having just come back uh, from this riveting trip to Israel where we got to meet with Ambassador Friedman and his great team at the embassy, uh, with the Minister of Defense, with the Prime Minister, we got the security briefing I just described, uh, I thought it was important to act. You know, the theme of this year's conference is choose to lead. And I think it's important that we pull together in a bipartisan way and demonstrate that Congress has Israel's back every bit as much as the President does. So it's a bill that would legislatively authorize the 10-year MOU at $3.3 billion and $500 million a year in missile system support. I view that as a floor, not a ceiling. The Rubio Coons bill will also make sure that Israel has access to precision guided munitions and to ammunition and other munitions should conflict come. It also ensures that we are more tightly coordinating on critical areas like cybersecurity and making sure that we sustain Israel's qualitative military edge. And it continues partnerships between the United States and Israel that teach about our values between Mashav and USAID, other initiatives that show the world how we promote peace and promote development together. So between the MOU and security package, between support for precision guided munitions, um, loan guarantees, and our values partnership, I think, I just happen to think that the Rubio Coons bill is a great idea. But this is where you come in. Because if you're going to choose to lead, it is my hope, my expectation, that in your time today coming to the Hill, you will help us secure more co-sponsors. As of right now, Rubio Coons has two. My hunch is that after you get to work on Capitol Hill today, we'll have not 20, not 30, not 50, but 70 or 80 co-sponsors of this bill. We need you. Please come do the work and lead. And Senator, what do you think, once everybody gets there, what do you think the prospects are? Are you optimistic? I'm optimistic because I think the security situation is dire. I think the values that unite us are important and enduring. And I think the prospect of our working together um, through the entire pro-Israel community and across the entire range of members of Congress to demonstrate to the world that when Iran tests Israel like it never has before, when Russia provides air cover for that testing, when Hezbollah and Hamas threaten from north and south, that we will continue to be the most reliable ally Israel could possibly have, and that we will show that in a democracy, we can come together to support this through citizen advocacy. Senator Coons, thank you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him another hand. Thanks, Easy man.